Logarithmic differentiation is so cool. You can handle so many functions with complicated exponents, but there's more. Let's think, let's push what we can do. We've done the derivative of x to the x. Oh yes, but can we do the derivative of x to the x to the x? Or let's set a real challenge. How about the derivative of x to the 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 x? Keep going, keep going. When do we stop? Don't stop, can't stop, won't stop. We're going to keep going out to infinity. What on earth is this kind of function? It's nothing on earth at all. It is the infinite, infinite. Power. power tower. Man, that's kind of a cool name for a function. And it's a really cool function. And let's compute its derivative. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, come on. How are we going to do that? What even is this? Does it make any sense? Well, just put that off for a minute. Let's just try. If you give up too soon, you definitely won't get anywhere. Let's try. Okay, so we've got this function, the infinite power tower, x to the x to the x to the x to the x. Keep going, keep going. Let's call that y. Now, I can't even really write that down on paper. Uh, so many exponents. What do I do? Ah, here's the thing. Let's write this as y equals x to the y. Now, time out here. Think about that for a second. That implicit equation captures within it this notion of iterated powers over and over, never ending. And that implicit equation is really the key to how we're going to be able to differentiate this function. In fact, what comes next should look pretty familiar to you. What are we going to do? We're going to apply the log operator to simplify that exponent. Taking the log of both sides on the left, we get log of y. On the right, we get y times log of x. Now we can differentiate implicitly. Applying that implicit differentiation operator on the left, we get dy over y. On the right, by the product rule, we get dy times log of x plus y times dx over x. Now what we can do is move all of the dy terms over to the left side. Factor out a dy. What is left over? We have quantity 1 over y minus log of x. On the right, the dx terms are simply y over x times dx. Now we can manipulate these differentials, solve for the derivative, and we get dy dx equals y over x times quantity 1 over y minus log of x inverse. Multiplying that through by a y in order to clear that 1 over y in the denominator gives us a final answer of y squared divided by x times quantity 1 minus log of x. And that is it. That is the derivative of the infinite power tower. So, what do you think? Do you think that's cool? I think it's cool. But I feel a little weird. There's nothing inherently wrong about the steps that we've taken, about the things that we have done using logarithmic differentiation, but I feel a little weird about this function. I'm pretty sure that this function does not exist at the value x equals, say, 2, or anything bigger than that. I think this function makes sense when x equals 1. I think, with a little bit of work, you could figure out what the value of the infinite power tower is at x equals square root of 2. But for things like x equals 0, I have no idea what this even means. Where is this function defined? Is this function continuous? Is this function differentiable? Does this function make any sense? And the answer, of course, is no, it does not make sense. It makes no sense. And it does not have to. 
we do not have to be able to see the graph of the function. We do not have to be able to input it into a calculator. We do not have to be able to experience this function in any sensory way in order to be able to handle it, to differentiate it. This infinite power tower, you cannot see it, you cannot smell it, you cannot taste it, you can't input it into a calculator in the way that we have defined it, but you can differentiate it using the techniques that we have learned. Think about that for a second. That is one of the things that is so cool about mathematics is you can work with, you can prove theorems about mathematical entities of which you have no sensory experience. That is a great reason to study mathematics, to explore worlds beyond our senses. But so what? I mean, come on, infinite power towers? Who cares about that? What could that kind of function ever be good for? What am I going to tell you? Of course, I'm going to tell you that this is useful. Maybe not directly, but indirectly. One way to properly define the infinite power tower is through a function called the Lambert W function. We're not going to go down that path, but I want you to know that there is a way to precisely define the infinite power tower to precisely say what its domain of convergence, continuity, differentiability is, and that it's related to a very special function, the W. That, aha, look at that, it winds up being useful in quantum physics, in all kinds of different applications. We're not going to see the W function or the infinite power tower again in our story, this was really just for fun. But now you know a little bit more about what's behind that infinite power tower.